Welcome. I'm Michael Redman, Director of Research at the Santa Barbara Historical Museum, and your host for a Santa Barbara History Moment. This moment profiles William Wells Hollister, entrepreneur, philanthropist, and one of the most colorful and influential figures in Santa Barbara's history. W.W. W. Hollister was born on a farm in Ohio in 1818. After his father's death, he and his brothers ran the family farm, iron foundry, and mercantile store until 1852, when W.W. W. joined a wagon train headed for California. Hollister traveled up and down the state, spending some time in the colorfully named town of Volcano in the gold country. He returned east and convinced his brother Joseph to join him in California. With their sister Lucy, they drove a flock of 4,000 sheep westward. It was a difficult trek. The party had to fight off Paiute Indian attacks, and the brothers had to face down a mutiny of hired hands when the latter initially refused to carry the sheep one by one across a swift running river. Additional hazards included droughts and blizzards. But even though the Hollisters lost over half their animals on the 15-month trip, they still deemed it a success. The Hollisters and their various partners, most notably Albert and Thomas Dibley, became highly successful ranchers, buying over 140,000 acres all across the state. This included ranches at Lompoc, Gaviota, and other areas in Santa Barbara County. Their county holdings stood at over 125,000 acres. In 1869, Hollister bought property in Tecolote Canyon in Goleta and named his new ranch Glen Annie after his wife, Annie James. He made the ranch an agricultural showcase, raising crops not normally associated with this area, including coffee, bananas, tea, and dates. Hollister became one of the most prominent citizens of Santa Barbara. He was a key stockholder in such civic improvements as Stern's Wharf, the San Marcos Building, and the Libero Theater. For a short period, the San Marcos Building housed Santa Barbara College, an institution providing elementary and high school level education, which Hollister co-founded. Hollister owned the Arlington Hotel for a time, Santa Barbara's first luxury hotel. Its opening in 1875 was a watershed event in the development of tourism here. Hollister was also a prime mover in setting up the city's first public library, as well as bankrolling the Santa Barbara Press, the voice of the Republican Party in the city. In 1872, his financial support allowed Jose Libero's dream of building an opera house in Santa Barbara to become a reality. In 1875, he built his Grand Avenue from Glen Annie to town, which is now known as Hollister Avenue. Hollister's purchase of his beloved Glen Annie ended in heartache for his family. Hollister had purchased the ranch from the heirs of Nicholas Dent, despite receiving some pointed advice that title to the ranch was clouded at best. In 1876, the heir's attorney, Thomas B. Bishop of San Francisco, filed suit to void the sale. After 14 years of legal wrangling, four years after Hollister's death, Annie Hollister was ordered by the court to vacate the premises. As Annie left her home in Upper Glen Annie Canyon for the last time, the house mysteriously burst into flames and burnt to the ground, a cause never officially explained. Bishop took as his legal fee the lower part of the Glen Annie Ranch, which later became known as the Bishop Ranch. By the early 1880s, Hollister's health was failing, due in part to his accidentally ingesting gopher poison. He moved to the San Marcos building, now a hotel, to be closer to his private physician, Dr. Robert Winchester, after whom Winchester Canyon is named. Hollister died at the hotel in 1886, and he was laid to rest in Santa Barbara Cemetery. His funeral cortege stretched some three miles from the Arlington Hotel to the cemetery, a fitting farewell to one of Santa Barbara's outstanding citizens. Join me next time for another moment in Santa Barbara's history.